Okay, Plasma. What's one plus one? Um, let me see. Okay, I got it. One plus one equals two men. You know, I'm not sure if this thing is stupid or brilliant. In any case, I have to give it partial credit because it had the word two in there, which is what I was looking for. In any case, my plasma cutter just picked up a new skill. It's now both a plasma cutter and a pen plotter. It's like the conjoined twin of the tool world. I'm not sure if that really makes any sense. So the reason I want a pen plotter on my plasma cutter is that I use it all the time to make folded sheet metal structures. The plasma cutter is amazing at this. It's an awesome technique for making almost anything. You can usually make what you want much faster and cheaper than machining it or even 3D printing. But the problem I have is that I'll make pretty complicated things because the plasma cutter can cut any shape. And after I cut it, I can't figure out where to place the bends. There'll be off angle bends and things like that. I often am off where I place them and then the parts aren't the right shape and I don't know about you, but for me, that's a problem. And so the pen plotter's answer. I can draw all of the bend lines and then cut the part out and then they're all located perfectly to each other. And, and when I go to bend it, I don't have to spend a bunch of time trying to figure out where the bends should go. Just line it up with whatever bender I'm using and I'm done, it's awesome. Another common use of plasma cutters is making signs and other art. You've probably seen the ads in the back of popular mechanics telling you to make money with your plasma cutter. I think Plasma Cam has been putting those ads in there for about 30 years. And with a pen plotter, you can make even better art. This is a quick demo that I made. I'm not sure really what you would do with this, but you can make it if you want to, I guess. Making the plasma cutter be both a plasma cutter and a pen plotter is actually harder than you would think. If you want a crappy pen plotter, you can just make a thing that you can put the pen in every time you want to draw and then draw and take it out. But that's super lame. I want a thing where it's just part of the machine, I can just send it G-code, and it'll draw, it'll cut, it'll do both, and I don't have to worry about it. And it's challenging because, for one, you have to be able to raise and lower the marker. The reason for this is that the, the head of the plasma unit, the torch, is extremely close or even touching the work sometimes, and to draw on it, you have to be lower than the torch so that the torch doesn't hit. And if you just have it stationary, you'll be drawing all the time, which is not what I want. And so you have to be able to raise it shy of the torch so that you're not hitting, and then bring it down when you want to cut. The second challenge is that most markers have some kind of cap on them. If I have to take the cap off every time I want to use it, then I might as well just be putting the, the marker in, also super lame. Thankfully, the good folks of Sharpie Corporation, I think that's the name of the company, they make a retractable Sharpie. This makes the problem of decapitating the pen retractable. And having to make some sort of cap taker on or offer would have been a nightmare. I don't know if I would have done this project if I had to do that. But with this, I can open it somehow with the machine. The third challenge is just getting stuff on the business end of the plasma cutter. There's a lot of electrical noise. It's pretty difficult. I have a design that solves all of these challenges. To raise and lower the torch, I'll be using an air cylinder, which is a piston inside of a tube. And you can apply air pressure on one side or the other, and it'll push the piston back and forth. So if I put air in here, it'll push the piston to the left. If I put air in here, it'll push the piston to the right. The challenge with using an air cylinder is that it only has two positions. It's either in or it's out. And to make this work with the plasma cutter, I need to be able to raise it to open the Sharpie against some sort of immovable object. I need to be able to lower it to draw, but then I need to be able to sit somewhere in the middle so that I'm not drawing when I don't want to be. And the air cylinder can't do that by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach two relatively stiff springs preloaded to the air cylinder. Then if I want to go up, I just have to compress one of the springs and then if I want to go down, I just have to compress the other spring. Then if I release all the air pressure, the springs will push it back to the middle. 
The one thing to note about springs is that they have to be pretty stiff for this to work because they don't actually accurately locate the, the piston. And the reason for that is there's friction. If the spring isn't strong and there's friction, there's a range of positions that it can sit where the spring force can't overcome the friction. And it, it can lead to the Sharpie not sitting where you want it to sit. So this might make sense intuitively. Say for example, in the air cylinder, there's one pound of friction. You have to apply one pound of force before it moves. And the springs only compress one inch per pound of force you apply to them. That means that I have to compress the spring more than one inch before it generates enough force to be able to overcome friction. And that would give me basically plus minus one inch of range that this marker can sit and not move. And so I'm using stiff springs to overcome that. Schematically, it would look like this. I have two, the two springs on the output of the air cylinder. And if I wanna go up, I have to compress this spring. If I wanna go down, I have to compress that spring. If I release pressure from both ports, then it centers somewhere. This is actually challenging to drive as well. So I'll be using a solenoid valve and it's a five port two way, which I'm not gonna go into all the details of what that means, but basically it's a valve that can apply pressure. It can switch pressure from one hole to the other. So it can put pressure here and vent this one or vice versa. The problem is it doesn't have any no pressure state, it's one or the other. So what I'll be doing instead is I'll be using two of these valves. I'll have one valve on each input and they will sw switch each input from pressurized and not pressurized, open to atmosphere. So if I wanna move it this way, I'll apply pressure to this one and turn this one off. And if I wanna move it this way, I'll do the opposite. And then if I want it to sit in the middle, I'll turn both of them off and the springs will push it to the middle. You'll see how this is set up when I have it built up. So that's the plan of attack. The next step is a lot of CAD. I printed the parts in a rigid material. This is me removing them from the supports which hold them up when they're being printed. To get the shorter rail, I just cut a length off of a longer rail because I didn't have a shorter rail available. And the rail is kind of the backbone of the whole system. Almost everything is built off of this. You can see the, the captive nut for the air cylinder and then I'm putting in the other captive nut here which holds the adjustment screw for for where the position of the stage is when it's when it's at rest. This other piece is the the kind of super duper piece that holds most of the springs in the air cylinder and that the sharpie clicks off against. The air cylinder is held in with this big nut and the clocking of the air cylinder so that you can access the air ports is just set by how you clock the nut. And then the air cylinder is attached to the stage with this captive nut. And there's a, there's a small amount of adjustment here if you need it, but there's, there's kind of adjustment in a bunch of different places, so I didn't need this. I didn't have a long enough screw, so I just welded two together. And this is the screw that pulls upwards and it opposes the one that pulls downwards. And it's actually the adjustment screw. So if I need to change the position that it's sitting, I turn that screw. To cut the bracket, I'm just cutting it out of some sheet metal and then bending it in the press. This would have been really convenient to have the, the bend lines drawn on it. And then this, this bracket has slots in it so I can adjust the whole height of this thing on the plasma cutter. I should have screwed it on first. <laughs> it's really hard to get these screws in there. Tightening up everything for the final assembly. Sharpie going into the Sharpie clamp. I printed a bunch of these clamps, figuring I'd break a bunch of them, but so far I haven't broken the first one, which is fantastic. And then the final touch is the push lock connectors for the hose. And that's it for the assembly of the, the thing. Since my Z-Stage is basically a piece of 8020 on a rail, it's very easy to install. It's just two screws, get it in there. I swear, I just keep stuffing more and more things into these energy chains, and it is just a nightmare. This is probably the worst part of the entire project is trying to route the hose through these. I'm too lazy to undo all of the plates, and so 
I take some of them off and spend way longer trying to fish it through than it would have taken just to remove all of the plates. I'm probably never going to learn my lesson. Here's my two solenoid valves. You can see that there's some centered bronze dampers. This lets me dial in the rate that the air cylinder goes. So this is my electronics box. I just added a couple relays to control the valves. I'm not gonna go into the details. This is a case where my general policy of getting things fast and cheap really backfired. I knew when I bought this box, it was probably gonna be pretty tight and I just keep sticking more and more stuff in here. And every time, just like the energy chain, it gets worse and worse and it's always terrible. I could easily fit a four times as large box on the plasma cutter with no problem. I should just have done that. It was a pain routing the tubes, but it is great having it all pneumatically controlled. There's no wires, no noise. It's a lot easier to deal with than any active electronics on the head. I've banged my head against the wall many times trying to eliminate noise with this machine. Maybe someday I'll make a video on the torch height controller I tried to make. It was a terrible experience. So that's about it. Let's see if this thing works. Okay, Plasma. Do you like my video? This video is the best. Smashing MF subscribe button. All right, that's enough shenanigans. Let's look at how this thing actually works. To open the Sharpie, you raise it up and then release it. And then to draw, you pull down and then you're ready to go. The reason there's this screw here is that I can use this to adjust where exactly this sits to fine tune the system. If I want it to sit a little bit higher, I can turn this screw down and that will compress this spring more. So in order to get the plasma cutter aligned with the marker, I need to know the offset between them. I made a guess and now I'm, now I'm drawing and cutting a 90 degree angle and I can measure the distance between both legs of the angle to get the X and Y offset between the two, the two heads. And I had to do this a couple of times just to get it really dialed in. But at the, very, at the end, I can now draw a line and then completely obliterate it with the plasma cutter. There was once a Sharpie line underneath here, totally gone, and that's what I wanted to see. So I'm really curious to see what this thing can do. This is a hard part I designed previously. It's a motorized caster for a tree climbing robot. I made it to climb this huge pine tree and put Christmas lights on it. Maybe someday I'll make a video on it. And right now it's drawing all the bend lines. There's many of them. And then the little plus signs are hole drill markers. And then it slices everything out. And like I said, this is a pretty complicated part. But it looks great. Looks nice and square. And the Sharpie is a little thick. I need to get a finer point marker for it. My shop isn't set up to bend parts this complicated. So I have a bunch of improvised bending setups to, to get it done properly. But overall, I'm super happy with this result. It's way better than what I was able to get previously. Before I had big gaps and nothing was really lined up or square at all. And this is quite usable. This is a really fun build. Hopefully I'm not typecasting myself as a plasma fanboy. I love all of my tools equally. At least that's what I tell my friends and family when they ask. I'm looking forward to using this for a bunch of different cool projects. I build stuff all the time and I'm having a lot of fun making videos. So. If you like what you see, you should consider subscribing and hopefully there'll be more cool stuff. That's all I got. I'm out of here. Thanks.